Was Eddie Murphy supposed to be the fourth Ghostbuster? Check Rolling Stone magazine's Axel Foley. That's what it is. <laughs> Hold on to your popcorn, because we're about to unravel a Hollywood bombshell. This city is headed for a disaster of biblical proportion. Real wrath of God type stuff. Zach. Fire and brimstone coming down from the sky. Did you know Eddie Murphy was this close to being the fourth Ghostbuster? But wait, there's more. Discover the shocking twist that led to Ernie Hudson snagging the iconic role of Winston Zedmore instead. One of Hollywood's best kept secrets is Eddie Murphy's close call as the fourth Ghostbuster now revealed. But what happened next will leave you speechless. How did the now beloved, but at that time relatively unknown Ernie Hudson beat out the box office champ of the 80s and 90s, Eddie Murphy, to land in one of the most iconic FX field movies of a generation. Ernie Hudson himself explains the unexpected rise to ghost-busting fame. Brace yourselves for the mind-blowing truth behind this Tinseltown bombshell. Keep your Sour Patch Kids close because more blockbuster drama is on the horizon as we delve farther into this untold tales of Ghostbusters Hollywood casting carousel. Brace yourself for an epic journey through cinema history. Get ready to uncover the hidden gems and shocking revelations in the next chapter of Tinseltown Saga. In 1984, the supernatural comedy blockbuster Ghostbusters hit the screens, directed and produced by Ivan Reitman. With a script penned by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, starring comedic giants Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, eccentric parapsychologist Peter Venkman, Ray Stance, and Egon Spangler. Additionally, Winston Zedmore, played by Ernie Hudson. The film captured the hearts and audiences worldwide. Originally conceived by Aykroyd as a vehicle for himself and John Belushi to venture through time and space battling supernatural threats, the untimely death of Belushi led to a reworking of the script. Ramis was brought in to help transform the concept into a store set in New York City grounded in reality. Despite skepticism from Columbia Pictures due to its relatively high budget and the novelty of employing expensive special effects in a comedy, Ghostbusters went into production. Filming took place from October 1983 until January 1984. Utilizing locations in New York City and Los Angeles, Richard Edlund's establishment of Boss Film Studios helped bring Aykroyd and Ramis's vision to life through a combination of practical effects, miniatures, and puppets delivering the ghoulish visuals that became iconic. Now, upon its release on June 8, 1984, Ghostbusters received critical acclaim and became a cultural phenomenon. Bill Murray's performance, in particular, was lauded as the film's blend of comedy, action, and horror struck a chord with audiences. It grossed $282.2 million during its initial theatrical run, becoming the second highest grossing film of 1984 and solidifying its place as one of the most successful comedies of the 1980s. The success of Ghostbusters spawned a multi-billion dollar multimedia franchise, including an animated television series, video games, comic books, and more. It was followed by a sequel in 1989, Ghostbusters 2, with further attempts to develop a third installment put on hold until after Ramis' death. In 2016, a reboot received mixed reviews, paving the way for the return of the original storyline with Ghostbusters Afterlife in 2021. Now, as we look ahead, anticipation builds for the next chapter in the Ghostbusters saga with Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, slated for release in March 2024. Ernie Hudson recently appeared on the Breakfast Club morning show with host Charlemagne the God, DJ Envy, and Jess Hilarious to promote the release of the new movie Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. During the conversation, it was Hudson himself who shared the details of being the second and ultimately last choice for the role of the fourth Ghostbuster 
Winston Zedmore. At that time, it was writer and creator Dan Aykroyd who had his SNL alum Eddie Murphy in mind for the part of a Ghostbuster. However, following the success of his stint on SNL, Eddie Murphy was a very popular and sought-after actor starring in top billing at roles such as Axel Foley in the widely successful cop comedy Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, Eddie Murphy began his career as a stand-up comedian and in 1980 he actually joined the cast of Saturday Night Live uh, at the young age of 19. By 1982 he scored his first box office hit with 48 Hours. He followed up with his next film Trading Places in 1983 and by 1984 he was actually set to complete his biggest hit as the young Axel Foley in Beverly Hills Cop. Additionally, um, Dan Aykroyd had in mind the part for Eddie Murphy to play the third Ghostbuster character scientist, Peter Venkman. However, there was a scheduling conflict with Eddie's movie, Beverly Hills Cop, that prevented a successful casting of Murphy, and he was unable to play the part. Really, with all the solo success he had obtained at this point, Eddie may have had other priorities. That role of Peter Vinkman was eventually filled and played by Dan Aykroyd's SNL castmate, Bill Murray. So after the casting of Bill Murray, a casting call for the fourth Ghostbuster, Winston Zedmore, was made. Now, during his interview, Ernie Hudson tells The Breakfast Club Morning Show, that he was not chosen immediately and went on almost three months of callbacks before it was determined he had the part of Winston Zedmore. Ernie Hudson started, like many actors, in theater and eventually landed smaller roles in television, such as the hit series Fantasy Island, Dukes of Hazard, and The Eighteen. His first appearance in a movie was in 1982 in the film Penitentiary 2. Now this is where it gets a little shocking. Ernie Hudson told The Breakfast Show Morning Club he was actually only paid a surprisingly low amount of $40,000 for the role of Winston Zedmore in Ghostbusters and not a penny for the merch or other money-making items the film produced. Now remember, this is from a film that grossed $282.2 million during its initial theatrical run. Talk about pay disparity, even in 1984. Now, the other cast members were paid significantly higher salaries, and he attributes this pay disparity to his lack of understanding of how Hollywood contracts work and that the others had amazing lawyers who were able to negotiate better salaries. He does indicate that in the sequels that followed, he successfully negotiated much better pay after the initial movie's success as he had a better understanding of how things worked. Now, Ernie Hudson has gone on to appear in several movies, TV, and film, and while the rest is movie-making history. Now, as we reach the end of this chapter in the Ghostbusters saga, Let's reflect on the timeless legacy it has left behind. From the iconic characters to the groundbreaking effects, the Ghostbusters saga has left an indelible mark on pop culture. Ghostbusters has captured the hearts of audiences for generations. Are you excited about the new movies in the franchise? Let us know in the comments. Remember to stay tuned for more captivating stories from the world of cinema. Join us next time as we continue our exploration of Hollywood's most beloved classics and the exciting journeys they've taken us on. Until then, keep the proton packs charged and the ectoplasm contained. Sometimes weird things happen. Someone has to deal with it for me. And who are you going to call?